Uh, this is Clark Kent from the Predatory Lending Network, out with a special tribute to Leonard Nimoy's passing this recently. So, sir, what do you think about Leonard Nimoy's legacy? Um, I think it's a very important one for a lot of fans and a lot of people, even outside Star Trek, because he was such a good actor, he could draw people into the series. It wasn't just some weird guy in pointed ears, that he was very relatable, and uh, he managed to pull it off, which who the heck would have ever expected anybody could. Well, I think what people sometimes forget is that Leonard Nimoy not only was an actor who brought the character of Spock to life, but he was a guy who was involved in all kinds of different forms of art. Uh, he was a photographer, he was a director, he helped contribute to storylines. So he wasn't just a guy who put on some ears and went on TV and did his thing. He was a true artist who, who always did his best to bring um, the best he could to a role and lend it a sense of gravitas. I think that very few people are fortunate enough to touch as many people as he did, have a wonderful body of work that is respected by legions and legions of fans, uh, not only Star Trek, but of course In Search Of, you know, even some of his directorial stuff, um, his music sort of, maybe a little bit. And, uh, and not only that, but, but very few people are lucky enough to know how loved that they were. And I, so I think that uh, he lived a really good long life, and you know he felt the love, especially at the end there. If you look at his last tweet, you can tell that he knew. Uh, personally, uh, I was about 13 years old when I first saw Star Trek, and as soon as I saw him as Spock, he became my hero, and he actually inspired me to go into science, and I became a physicist, and uh, he was my hero, uh, and he left the. Uh, he has influenced so many people around the world and around, you know, and around the entire world. I think his legacy is that uh, tell people to live long and prosper. His legacy was amazing. It was huge. It affected everybody's life. And um, I remember growing up watching everything with him and like everything. And um, it's it's a tragedy, but you know, it's it's it was his time, and it was it's. Oh, right now, as I think I think everybody would be okay with it. You say he's very relatable. Do you have any particular favorite episodes of his, or any favorite episodes of the show that stand out in your mind? Favorite episodes? Uh... Wow, you know that's always a hard one to put me on the spot because it's like um, so many of them. Um, I'm up time dealing with, you know, here, here's a man who only um, gets horny every seven years. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. I am a bit more than that. Yeah, exactly. But it was it, it was a very funny way—not funny way, but a very subversive way—to get sex on the airwaves in the 1960s, and really, you know, address the fact that yeah, if somebody doesn't do it for seven years, they have a lot of pent-up energy, and uh, he, he portrayed that very well. Um, I I think in general, just. He always was somebody, he valued, it, it, it was a character that valued intelligence, valued knowledge, and uh, he had strength without necessarily violence. Kirk was the one who had to punch everybody to prove that he had strength, Spock didn't. He had the strength without doing that. Um, so I, I thought that was very important part of his character. Um, so, and, and I think the Star Trek in general, um, you know, they had the diversity of characters, you had Asian, black, uh, a Vulcan, you know, minority of, of the ultimate minority. And I watched it as a small child, and I already knew at that point there's something here that's really important to me, and I didn't even know what it was, and that was because when you're seven years old, you don't know you're gay. But yet I could instantly sense that, hey, these people accept everybody. Everybody's important, everybody has value. Everybody will have a role in this society. And then I grew up, and when I was an adult, I went, oh, that's it. Oh, um, actually, not so much an episode, but I thought that his char uh, the character of Spock in Star Trek, the motion picture, was actually really, um, the storyline of that whole movie is really about Spock. And people don't really realize that. They think, oh, it's that slow movie with the big cloud. But no, it's really about Spock kind of um, coming to peace with his, himself as half human, half alien, and kind of making his own next step in his own personal evolution. Well, my favorite episode of the original series is For the World is Hollow and I Have Touched the Sky, which is more of a McCoy-centric episode than a Spock-centric episode. But, uh, but Spock has always been a huge influence in my life. I'm a Trekkie from birth. So 
One of the th the only thing that I ever took with me uh, from place to place. I, I grew up in a Navy family, so of course I you know there was long periods of my life where I didn't have friends, and Spock was like you know my friend. And um, I but I have a Spock poster that I've been carrying around. It's always the very first thing I hang up in every place that I live for 20 years. Yes, uh, mirror mirror. That's the one that really really stands out in my mind because that is one where uh, Spock, uh, actually the the entire crew played their evil arch enemies of each other. And I, I'm sure you probably remember Mirror Mirror. And in both of them, Spock was an honorable person. He, he, he was a man of integrity, whether he was in one universe or the other universe. And I remember uh, uh, towards the end of the episode when uh, Kirk comes up to him and says, Spock, you're a man of integrity in, in each universe, and you will do well. So I, I remember that very well. So that's an excellent episode. Now, Star Trek was the first to deal with many social issues, uh, racial issues of uh, their day. And other. Is there any particular social issue that you would like to see addressed on the show that we're not necessarily dealing with in society today? That we're not necessarily dealing with today? Well, because they were, mean, seemed to be at the, he at the forefront of everything. So if they were to do a Star Trek today, what kind of issue would yeah. you want to see them deal with? Um, I think they could do a lot with religion and a lot with um, identity, because that seems to be a big issue in our society. We're not, we're having trouble understanding how to integrate our society so that there's a big mixture in every country. It used to be very easy to understand whether you were in a Christian nation or predominantly black nation, predominantly Muslim, predominantly whatever. And now as cultures are mixing, we seem to be in this big pressure cooker. Yeah. Nobody really knows how to deal when, hey, it's no longer the white Christian nation, it's no longer the black Muslim nation, it's no longer the Chinese Buddhist nation. It's all mixing. And nobody really knows how to deal with that. And I'd be very interested to see ideas on how to deal with that. In media, well, because well, they were like at the first to deal with like interracial issues, wars, right. terrorism. You know, I think uh, there, there is so much media today. You got the internet, you got TV, you got radio, you got books, you got comic books. I think it's all being addressed in, in one way or another. And so I can't really think of anything off the top of my head that would, uh, you know, that needs to be addressed. Well, there's, I mean, obviously there's no Star Trek series on the air right now. So, um. Comic books then? <laughs> oh. Um, you know, I think that, um, something that is being dealt with currently is kind of breaking out of the mold of the the women being in very impractical costumes. I think that costumes are becoming much more practical. Um, I mean, I love a sexy costume as much as the next person. I just want it to be practical. Like, is this is it realistic that she's going to be running around in four-inch heels? Probably not. <laughs> so uh, you wouldn't put a guy in a costume like that, huh? I would not. Not to say that Star Trek hasn't. Star Trek, they, I mean, even the first couple seasons of TNG, you saw the guys walking around in the little short dresses. So, it's, I mean, it's been known to happen, but yeah, probably not. I wouldn't put anybody in that. I don't even wear that. I wear flat boots. Um, I think, given today's current situation, Maybe something with a terrorist flavor, you know, uh, type thing you know, where they address that issue. Maybe they they go to some planet and or, or go to some civilization and there's a a, a terrorist fa faction out there, very similar to ISIS, like right now threatening the population. Something like that, I think, would be uh, something current, uh, current social issue. Yeah, well, me as a fan of Star Trek, didn't they deal with that with DS9 and the whole Maquis thing and stuff? Well, you're actually, you're right. Uh, DS9 was to that effect. There was terrorist. There was a terrorist group there, um, and it had a religious aspect because of it the had prophet. A religious aspect. Um, aside from that, uh, I really can't think of anything right now. Um. I guess the, the main thing as far as um, now is the equality issue um, that would be neat to see on the show. Now, I know Star Trek has been on the forefront of changing policy. They were like some of the first to show off new technology and deal with new social issues. How has Star Trek affected you personally and changed your life? And Well, um, it's kind of neat seeing all the gadgets come to life. 
as far as the tablets and what have you. It's, it's been pretty amazing watching it as a child and dreaming about it and then having it come into reality. So much of it already has. I think that it was so visionary of, of Gene Roddenberry and also many of the writers and designers. Uh, I mean, you look at the iPad, you look at the cell phone, uh, even, even hyposprays, you know, uh, laser technology. Uh, so much of that is owed in part to Star Trek and fans of Star Trek going into those fields. So in closing, is there any last minute things you'd like to say to the folks? Uh, well, we're here at the Long Beach Comic Con, and uh, it was a pleasure to talk to you, and uh, you know, live long and prosper. I would, obviously, you know, as a tribute to Leonard Nimoy, um, just Attention. that he knows that he was such a huge influence on my life and so many other lives, and you know, just thanking him for his contribution to just the nerd community in general, and, and you know, making us feel like we belonged as a part of something. It's a, that's a really great contribution. Uh, yes, uh, as you well know, yesterday Leonard and Moy passed away. The passing of a, of a true legend, a true uh, American icon, or world icon for that matter. And I know that we all will miss him very, very much. But yet, you know, we still have four of the cast members around. And uh, we hope to see them at conventions and making appearances. And, and may they all live long and prosper. Um, well, I just want to thank you for this. This is pretty amazing. And I thank everybody else who is a huge fan of the show and of the movies. Um, I was very saddened by his passing, but, uh, you know, he lived to be in 80, 83, and although that's kind of a little early these days to pass away, uh, can you imagine spending 83 years of your life being that, in that rewarding of a, of a, of a career, that rewarding of a, he's an icon. Everyone will always remember him, and uh, man, to, to spend even a day in his shoes would have been pretty awesome, and he spent 83 years in them. Now, Spock came back to life in, uh, what was it, Episode 3. Do you think yeah, we'll Star be Trek seeing him 3. come back to life anytime soon? I don't think we're going to see Leonard Nimoy come back unless somebody does a very, very tasteless fan film and it, it incorporates zombies into it or something. <laughs> so in closing, this is uh, Clark Kent from the Predatory Lending Network saying, Live long and prosper.